Uh, so let's just start with the nuclear physics uh, conceptual questions, which um, is part of the optional material next week. Uh, you know, you can ignore it entirely. If you think you might go into, you know, physics for graduate school or physics major, then I do encourage you to look at it. Uh, it is truly optional in the sense that I suspect a lot of, of instructors who teach physics for C don't really get into these materials. Um, I did because uh, I like it. <laughs> On the other hand, I skipped uh, the solid state physics entirely because uh, that's where I'm weaker. So, um, so you know, <laughs> different instructors take take a different picks. For me, uh, nuclear physics, radioactivity, particle physics, that's what I want you to talk about. So, so I used to cover it when we had regular session. Now we don't in our shortened 14-week session, but the material is there for you to look at if you're interested. So let me ask Perplexity these four questions and see how well it does. This is what I've been dying to ask uh, Generative AI about to see if uh, it does better than ChatGPT does or ChatGPT 3.5 does. So define and make yeah, this. Yeah, I don't think that is the hard question. Um, yeah, these are just definition questions. It'll probably do well. So, neutron is an example of a nucleon alongside, you know, proton. It's a particle in the nucleus. Uh, nucleus, that's uh, at the center of an atom made up of protons and neutrons. Um, nuclei, I think, uh, refers to a particular species of atomic nucleus um, characterized by a number of protons and neutrons. Let's check. <laughs> Neutron, yeah, um, is we've already been talking about neutron. It's like a proton except neutral in charge. It's an example of a nucleon. Um, so protons and neutrons. Um, yeah, nucleus is made up of nucleons, uh, <laughs> and the nuclide is yeah, almost yeah. That's how I had it memorized. <laughs> so like a helium four. Um, because it's a helium, it must have two protons. So it means it must have two neutrons. So it's it's a particular example of, of a nucleide. Uh, and isotopes, uh, I think we use isotopes and nucleides almost uh, interchangeably, uh, which is probably, there's uh, some technical sense in which it's, that's probably not correct. But let's see. Uh, isotopes are variants of chemical elements in our protons and for normal neutron. Yeah, so that sounds like that's a, like a um, synonymous to nucleide, uh, but maybe that's fine. <laughs> same thing, yeah. So, is that part of, oh, why do, yeah. Because, you know, same electrical interaction and most of the chemical properties determined by electrical interaction. Now, for the lighter atoms like hydrogen, sometimes uh, high, the interaction that Hydrogen takes part in can be different with the de de uh, deuterium. Deuterium? No. Deuteron. Deuteron? Deuterium. Deuterium. <laughs> so, um, so heavy water is a um, water molecule, H2O, that's uh, formed with uh, deuterium, sometimes uh, written as a D2O. And um, it can be toxic. If uh, you drink uh, like a pure heavy water, that can actually cause you a problem because with the light, um, with the light uh, atoms, the what's called a mass shift can actually cause slight difference in the uh, chemical or electrical interaction that can take place. But for heavier atoms, yeah, the mass difference doesn't really make that big of a difference. So they do end up with the same chemical properties, just a slight bit of an exception for say hydrogen and deuterium. So, yeah. so let me ask you this question. Uh, are chemical reactions of hydrogen and deuterium identical? I hope we do correctly say not identical. So, um, th this is like an exception where the mass is so light that additional neutron does make us a bit of a difference. Yeah, they are not identical. Yeah, differences are, yeah, reaction rates. Uh, yeah, so this is going into areas where I don't know much about. I, the one thing I do know is that heavy water is toxic if it's uh, like pure heavy water and you drink enough of it. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, uh, let me ask the next question. I hear a heavy water tastes sweet. I've never had a chance to drink it, so I don't know if it actually does taste sweet. I've watched a YouTube video where a guy um, tastes a heavy water and he says it's a sweet. <laughs> so, probably is. <laughs> what is the number greater than the number in the same? Um, I guess shortest answer might be relativistic effect. And I think the way I try to understand it intuitively is that nuclear force is a short range of force. So as um, your size of the nucleus gets bigger, and I think it gets bigger, yeah, as it gets bigger, uh, you need more neutrons to uh, kind of keep everything together. But I, this is just me trying to intuitively understand it. I don't know how correct that is uh, mathematically. Um, yeah, and neutrons are needed for stability. Um, oh, you know, I don't know if... Uh, well, because protons repel each other, uh, maybe. I forget what I wrote in the model answer. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a complex interplay of forces and particle interactions. Uh, protons and... Green so, for 40, neutrons exist, yeah, balance. Yeah, this is one, yeah. Um, and neutrons, neutral, strong nuclear force, uh, contribute to short ranged. Um, with the neutrons increases the yeah so this is what I was saying about uh, this was my second explanation um, and sure oh wait it's gonna go into more I think uh, all expression please but so there's a um, uh, way in which uh, neutrons and protons are identical particles uh, so this is really the reason for the term nuclear. Um, there's a symmetry called isospin uh, that <laughs> comes into play in nuclear physics. And isos so um, proton is the nucleon with the isospin up, and neutron is a nucleon with the isospin down. And it's a symmetry that's uh, um, kind of slightly broken. <laughs> that's why, you know, protons are different from neutron, at least at a normal energy scale. But there's a kind of picture in which you treat those two as part of an identical particle. So there's a, a way in which you can think of uh, nuclear energy levels filling up the way, you know, electron energy levels fill up with the electron spin up, electron spin down. So, you know, the nucleons, it fills up with a nucleon iso spin up, nucleon iso spin down, and so on. Uh, that's kind of getting at this uh, in a slightly different language. So increase neutral requirement uh, becomes even more pronounced. Increase the electrostatic repulsion, sure, more protons. Um, has a limited range. Yeah, so that was my reason number two. Um, additionally, it's looking heavier, out of part of our center, still my reason number two. It doesn't invoke special relativity, huh? I mean, I'm sure there's a way you can um, uh, cast it as a relativistic reason, but I think it's fine. Uh, we go to the next two question, beta and alpha decays, key difference between, okay, um, beta minus and beta, oh, it's not asking about difference between these two, it's asking for difference between beta and alpha, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just typing out this, it just ends up insane, about characters, they try to be nuclear and orange. Okay, uh, let me ask. So the biggest the difference is what particles they are made up of. Beta particles are electrons or positron if you're talking about beta plus. Alpha particles are uh, helium nucleus, helium-4 nucleus. Um, our characters are radioactive show it to be nuclear in origin and not atomic. Um, that it's high energy, like if it's atomic origin, the energy, the amount of energy the beta particles come out with, like there's no place where it could have come from. Like you get mega electron volt or higher uh, beta decays and those are not atomic energy level differences. Maybe kilo electron volts in heavy enough atoms, but not um, not mega electron volts. Um, name and list the two. Um, there's, show you to the nuclear in origin. Um, huh. 
I named the one. I can't quite think of. So it's possible that I was trying to get at that one and making you answer too in hopes that you will get to one. I forget what I put into the sample, the model answer. So let's, uh, let me read what perplexity wrote, right? And see if any of them are what I was thinking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Particles emitted, yeah. Alpha decay, they are alpha particle, which is the, this is the helium-4 nucleus. Two protons, two neutrons. Yeah, beta decay involves, um, did I? Yeah, I mean, it does, yeah, change of, involve change of, oh, I guess involving change of nucleus would be another reason to say, oh, it's nuclear in origin. Um, so, yeah, beta minus, you get an electron and an antineutrino, which you haven't talked about yet. Um, yeah, in beta plus decay, you get the antiparticle of electron, which we haven't properly talked about yet. Um, so, yeah, I'll put the, the yeah, good. Um, penetrating power, yeah. So alpha particles, so I think at the lab, a cloud chamber lab this week, I showed the little particle detector I got. The, the thing that I have, it cannot detect alpha particles at all because it just gets stopped by the, um, the protective um, thing, plastic. So it can only detect the beta particles. But um, I was glad to see the, the lead 210 that we had, which is a alpha source, um, which, you know, if I try to detect it with my detector, it wouldn't show anything at all. But uh, in the cloud chamber, you could see that it emitted alpha particles through the, the particle tracks. Um, so the penetrating power of alpha um, particle is a lot uh, lower than penetrating power of beta particle. Um, yeah, and high energy power. So um, in terms of radiation dose, uh, there's a factor of 10 you multiply to when it's alpha particle within your body. There's uh, for radiation safety people. Um, yeah, good. Similarity nuclear origin, yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Independence from, oh yeah, yeah. So whether, it, whatever chemical it's part of, you know, so like a tritium is a beta source and whether it's in water or you know hydrogen gas i'm pretty sure the decay rate wouldn't depend on what chemical it's part of so the, now it's not um there for heavy atoms uh, sometimes applied external field can affect its decay rate but it's a, a much smaller effect Independence from, yeah, same with the, like a applied electric field. Uh, those things um, can affect uh, the, them a little bit, but can affect the decay rate a little bit, but not a lot. Energy emission, yeah. So this is the thing that I remembered. But yeah, I think uh, these um, other two things that um, purple X dimension, that's what I was thinking of. It's possible that I have it in the model answer, <laughs> although I don't remember what I put in the model answer. Uh, that all looks good. Uh, let me ask the last question and then uh, wrap up this set. Why does a chain... Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a chain reaction, it's a matter of uh, neutron economy. Uh, how much neutrons, how many neutrons do you have? So any material that's a fissile uh, should uh, produce more neutron in the fission, uh, splitting of that particular isotope then the amount of, well, one neutron that need to come in to activate it. So um, so, so for fissile material that uh, releases more neutrons than it takes, that's the kind of the source of the chain reaction. And uh, you also need to have it in a, like a critical configuration, enough mass, critical mass, in a dense enough setup where the, the neutrons that are uh, emitted in the fission is likely to hit other isotopes uh, around. Yeah, that's what describe it. Yeah, so let's see. I'm pretty sure Perplex still the answer this well. I think chain reaction occurs because um, fission releases neutrons. Yeah, <laughs> which can then induce further fission events. Yeah, yeah, that's um, yeah, yeah. And uh, outside of physics context, I guess when people think about chain reaction, um, you might not be thinking of the self-sustaining sequence. 
But that's actually an important part of uh, the nuclear chain reaction. Otherwise, you know, it, it's like starting a fire. When you have a wet um, thing, you try to light it on fire and maybe you light it a little bit, but then it dies quickly. Uh, you basically need the material that will release more of what it took to start the reaction in the first place. And with the nuclear uh, fission reaction, it's neutron. Uh, neutron is what starts it, and you need to be releasing more of it as you go to have a self-sustaining sequence of reactions. So, yeah, fissile material, meaning it's like self-circular <laughs> definition of fissile, but I guess, you know, to make it not circular like this, uh, you know, chain reaction needs a fissile material, meaning it can sustain a chain reaction. It needs to be a kind of material isotope that would release more um, uh, neutrons after being hit by a neutron. Like uh, uranium-238 is not uh, fissile because uranium-238, when hit by a neutron, becomes uranium-239 that decays slowly into plutonium-239. And um, so that decay of uranium-239 into plutonium-239, I guess some sort of beta decay, that's not a fission, so uranium-238 is not fissile. But plutonium-239 would be fissile. I assume plutonium-240 is very unstable and it'll split. And uh, yeah. So, so yeah, that's first condition. Second condition, so you, you need them in a kind of a configuration, critical mass, uh, it, so that it, um, it, the released neutrons will... Um, the, where is it? Yeah, the released neutrons that they won't escape without... Or, you know, some of them will, but after accounting for that, you should still have enough neutrons to continue the chain reaction. Um, yeah. And yeah, neutron economy, that's the first phrase I said. Uh, and this is the kind of the, uh, so, you know, the how atomic weapons work, the basic, basic physics of it, you know, all of that is common. Uh, knowledge. Um, what is what might still be classified knowledge is basically the the details of uh, with each material how it's put together. I, I don't know if it's classified. I I know I don't know it. <laughs> um, it probably takes fair amount of um, nuclear engineering um, uh, expertise to kind of work it out. I, I know the kind of conceptual aspects of it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So sure that that um, yeah. I know the phrase neutron economy, and there it stops. That's where my knowledge stops. Um, so neutron moderation, I guess, um, yeah, they could be talking about chain reaction in a nuclear reactor. So uh, in a, a nuclear bomb, uh, they don't moderate the neutrons. Uh, they, they are just looking for a fast reaction. But in a, a nuclear reactor, you are kind of trying to be efficient with the your neutrons and slower neutrons uh, are more likely to interact, so you want to slow them down, and um, and uh, so the kind of the Chernobyl kind of um, disaster kind of thing. They use the the carbon rod as a moderator, and uh, and uh, I think uh, these days they use water as a moderator, which can have its own issues, but but that's a kind of aspect of nuclear engineering, uh, and. This also, I'm pretty sure in my model answer, I don't mention any of this, but they are, they sound correct enough. Yeah. Um, this, yeah. So this is kind of managing the neutron economy uh, and control mechanism. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. Um, they'll sound okay to me uh, with the caveat that I'm not an expert in nuclear engineering. So what sounds okay to me might actually contain tiny bits of inaccuracy. Check with the nuclear engineer if, uh, uh, you know, if it matters. Let's play the chain reaction process. Yeah, initiation. I have a, I think I did a demo with a FAT simulation. There's a kind of model demo with what looks like a, a critical mass and what doesn't look like a critical mass. Um, yeah. I don't know if this is the phrase they use, but sure. It sounds okay to me. A uh, non-expert in nuclear engineering. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, that all sounds good to me. Uh, at least nothing that I know enough to nitpick myself. It does seem kind of long, um, but um, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's this set. Let me 
go to the next set and I'm gonna uh, kind of reset perplexity because perplexity tends to get confused if I continue one particular chain for too long so um, so yeah 